So we were just talking about these U.S. funded biolabs, uh, not just in Ukraine, but in Georgia uh, and in countries that, you know, conveniently they border Russia, China and Iran. You know, the <laughs> the trinity of the axis of evil. Although, to be fair, we can't forget Syria and Venezuela and North Korea. Come on, should, you know, have some respect for the OGs. But uh, in any case, uh, you know, I was just talking to Diliano about that. Let's kind of recap what's happened, OK, because uh, just un up until a few days ago, uh, the, the idea that there are biological research facilities in Ukraine, not, not, not biological weapons, just bio facilities, bio research labs. This was, a, this was dismissed as a, a nut job conspiracy theory, right? Uh, I mean, if I can show you just um, this uh, from Foreign Policy magazine, this is from March 2nd. Look at the headline. They say, um, they say over here that, hold on, I'm just switching out for you. You can see the... There you go. You should see that now. It says, false claims of U.S. bio warfare labs in Ukraine grip QAnon, whatever that is. So, and they say the conspiracy theory has been boosted by Russian and Chinese media outlets. Really? Okay. So, so it's a conspiracy theory. I see. And then, of course, you have many other headlines about that. You have many other uh, um, uh, U.S. officials dismissing that, which I'll show you in a moment. But uh, let, let's let's look at all sides of the story. Let's present what every side has been saying. Let me show you, for example, let's begin with the, the, the so-called conspiracy theorists, right? So it's saying Russia and China are pushing this. Okay, let's see what Russia and China are saying, right? Let, what, what are they saying about this? So here's the Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson, okay? And uh, let's let's take a look at what he has to say. Recently, the U.S. biological labs in Ukraine have indeed attracted much attention. According to reports, in these facilities, a large quantity of dangerous viruses are stored. Russia has found during its military operations that the U.S. uses these facilities to conduct military plans. According to data released by the U.S., it has 26 labs in Ukraine. The U.S. has 336 labs in 30 countries under its control. The U.S. has also conducted many biological military activities in Fort Detrick. What is so they they have 336 labs in 30 countries. You know, and I was I was watching uh, uh, the the spokesperson. Uh, and, and he said, you heard me right, 336, and my jaw dropped, and I was like, should I be surprised? Should I be surprised? But there you, you go, uh, 26 in, in Ukraine. Let's look at what the Russians are saying, shall we? Here's a spokesperson uh, from the Russian uh, uh, foreign ministry. Take a look. Right, so she's basically echoing what Diliana was saying just a moment ago. Uh, a moment ago. I mean, she reported on this years ago, right? But she she was on the show a few moments ago, and in her reporting, uh, it's it's very uh, clear. It's abundantly clear that uh, these uh, uh, bio research facilities are funded by the Pentagon, right? By the the so called Department of Defense, uh, or as it should be <laughs> aptly named, the Department of Offense. But nevertheless, uh, that's what they're referring to. That this is a Pentagon funded. Um, uh, th these are Pentagon funded. Uh, 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 projects and and not not uh, strictly uh, um, limited to um, you know si scientific uh, uh, purposes that uh, you know they they make them out to be. So it's DTRA, as I believe the Defense Threat Reduction Agency. Here you can see in uh, Diliana's work again. This is from years ago. It's the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, DTRA, that has outsourced much of the work under the military program of the Pentagon to private com companies, which are not held accountable to Congress and which can operate more freely and move around the rule of law. I mean, this is absolutely astonishing what Diliana was talking about, how th these people who work in these companies, these private contractors, have diplomatic immunity. I mean, again, let me explain this to you. you diplomatic immunity is not a joke. You get that when you're, uh, for example, a consul or an ambassador or, or someone who's working in a diplomatic mission overseas, 
Okay, so that means you're performing consular services. You work in an, uh, uh, the embassy of your uh, country of, that you're a citizen of in a foreign country. Uh, it's true that you have scientific attaches, right, who, who, who are, again, they, they, they come as part of the diplomatic mission. But that's not what's going on here. These are private contractors. Do you understand? They're not scientific attaches. They're private contractors. And as part of this deal that the U.S. has inked with uh, Georgia in this case, which Diliana was reporting on, they, they made sure that um, these private contractors got diplomatic immunities, you know? And then the excuse they give her is so they can have a more comfortable life. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a really good one. Again, you know what the, the, the um, I mean, besides the, the nice amenities that one is, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, offered with diplomatic status, uh, you know, sure, you can park your car anywhere, but more importantly, you can't be searched. Your luggage can't be searched in any airport. Your car can't be searched by any police. I mean, they, they, you, you can't be arrested. Obviously, you can get in trouble with the embassy, if you, you know, and if you commit a violent crime, then you can be arrested, of course. That's not against the Vienna Convention. If you're out murdering people, they'll arrest you. And it's not a, a, even if you're a diplomat, right? But but uh, otherwise, they'll just write a, a letter to the embassy. You could lose your job and so on. But you, you get the point. You, you, you operate under... Uh, you, you don't up, operate under the, the legal framework of the country. You're in a separate class. And so these private contractors working in these bio labs were given diplomatic immunity. That's extraordinary. Uh, and obviously it comes with immunity from, prose uh, from prosecution as well. Um, so in any case, that's what the Chinese and the Russians are saying, which is apparently conspiracy theories. Okay. Um, again, th keep in mind, this is March, uh, I mean, March 7th, March 8th. And... I want to show you this uh, uh, John Kirby, who's the defense, uh, well, well, you know, uh, the Pentagon, the Department of Defense spokesperson. Let's take a look at what he has to say. You, uh, to speak to this on their own. And, and on this issue of um, uh, military biological um, labs in Ukraine that the Russians keep uh, raising, yeah. can you basically explain to us what type of relationship, if any, there was between the Pentagon and the Ukrainian side on any biological labs. Uh, okay. When was the last cooperation? And what do you have to say about these Russian accusations? The Russian accusations uh, are absurd. They're laughable. And, uh, you know, in the words of my Irish Catholic grandfather, a bunch of malarkey. There's nothing to it. <laughs> a bunch of malarkey. Oh, Christ. Hey, come on, you have to admit that's quite funny. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll let him continue. And, uh, you know, in the words of my Irish Catholic grandfather, a bunch of malarkey. <laughs> There's nothing to it. It's classic Rus Russian propaganda. And, uh, and uh, I wouldn't, uh, if I were you, I, I, wouldn't give it, uh, I wouldn't give it a drop of ink worth, worth paying attention to. Yeah, but, but uh, can you explain to us, what it, has there been any relationship between the... We are not, not developing biological or chemical weapons inside Ukraine. It's not happening. Ah, uh, you... Uh, again, uh, I'm not a body language expert, but I can smell bullshit when I see it. <laughs> All right, or, I can, I, or malarkey, um, as uh, John Kirby's Irish grandfather would say. Oh, that's not good. But again, that's not the most incriminating. I'll, you, you, know, you know exactly what video I'm going to play for you uh, in, in a second. I just want to show you the, 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 the various uh, claims that each country has been making. All right, let's take a look. This is Jen Psaki, the White House spokesperson. So she's saying, We took note of Russia's false claims about alleged U.S. biological weapons labs and chemical weapons development in Ukraine. We've also seen Chinese officials echo these conspiracy theories. That's what they're calling them. Okay? This is preposterous. It's the kind of disinformation operation we've, been repeat we've seen repeatedly from the Russians over the years in Ukraine and in other countries, which have been debunked, right? Uh, they say the United States is in full compliance with its obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention and the Biological Weapons Convention and does not develop or possess such weapons anywhere. Um, it's a, the, the, she continues, it's Russia that has a long and well-documented track record of using chemical weapons, including in attempted assassinations and poisoning of Putin's political enemies, like Alexei Navalny. It's Russia that continues to support the Assad regime, the Assad regime, in Syria, which has repeatedly used chemical weapons. It's Russia that has long maintained a biological weapons program in violation of international law. So, look, man. I mean, already when, when she was saying the stuff, the first couple of posts, I'm like, 
this sounds like 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 BS, but when she throws the Assad thing, and then I knew it's BS because <laughs> that stuff has been debunked a million times in in in, in Khan Sheikhun, and then of of course in in Duma. I mean, there are multiple uh, and 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 Ruta. There are multiple gas attacks. Uh, there are dozens of them, right? Which they say the Syrian government carried out. Okay, let me let me put this to you. Let me let me put this to you. In 2013, 2014, the Russians and the Americans. With the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, the OPCW, they came together to dismantle Syria's chemical weapons program, right? All of them, right? So it's an international effort and, and uh, um, a very noble one at that. Okay. So in 2014, they said that they dismantled Bashar al-Assad's chemical weapons program. It's gone. Let me show you a headline from the BBC. Okay. So... Here's one from November 2013, Syrian chemical weapons set to be destroyed at sea. And then, of course, there are many others where they, they, they confirm that they, they've completed the mission. So are you, are you telling me that you didn't destroy them? Which one is it? Did you destroy them or not? You, the Americans, because you were responsible for destroying them. So <laughs> that's one point. That's one point. But I, I digress. I digress. Let's just go back a bit, right? So uh, she's saying here that the, the U.S. Um, uh, doesn't have any of these weapons, and it's all conspiracy theories. Uh, well, why won't you just answer the question? Because every time someone is asking you whether there's a relationship, like someone was asking John Kirby, now this reporter, he said, is there a relationship between the Pentagon and, and cuts him off? Because there is a relationship. Here it is. Deliana published it many, many years ago, that there is a, a relationship um, between... Here you go. There, there is a relationship between the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, DTRA, right? There are pen these are Pentagon contractors. The, the, the Pentagon has contracted people to carry out this work. Now, we get to the, very, the, the, we get to the climax. Get ready. Get ready because I'm about to play this for you, okay? Are you ready? Recognize. Let's, let's see what we have. Let, let's see what... Uh, Under Secretary Victoria Newland has to say, and Marco Rubio, Senator Marco Rubio. Let, let's see what they have to say about this issue. Um, does Ukraine have chemical or biological weapons? Uh, Ukraine has uh, biological research facilities, which. Ukraine has. Um Biolo biological, what was the question? <laughs> That's off to a good start. In fact, we are now quite concerned Russian troops, Russian forces may be seeking to uh, gain control of. So we are working with the Ukrainians on how they can prevent any of those research materials. Hold on a second. You, you just said it's, it's just regular, plain old biological research facilities. Why would you care about the Russians getting a hold of that? What does that mean? Yeah, they're going to steal the RAM from inside the computers? <laughs> they're going to they're gonna take a couple of motherboards with them? What are, what are you afraid of falling into their hands exactly if there's just, you know, plain old biological research? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. We are now quite concerned Russian troops, Russian forces may be seeking to... Uh, gain control of. So we are working with the Ukrainians on how they can prevent any of those research materials from falling into the hands of uh, Russian forces should they approach. I I'm sure you're aware that the Russian propaganda groups are... <laughs> He's like, okay, you fucked that up. Hold on a second here. If there's an attack, it is the Russians, right? Just say the Russians, Victoria. <laughs> Be putting out there all kinds of information about how they've uncovered a plot by the Ukrainians to release biological weapons in the country and with NATO's coordination. If there's a biological or chemical weapon incident or, uh, or attack inside of Ukraine, is there any doubt in your mind that 100 percent it would be the Russians that would be behind it? There is no doubt in my mind, Senator, and it is classic. <laughs> Dude, she was like, there is no doubt in my mind, Senator, it's those pesky Ruskies again. God, what an obedient lapdog she is. She, she, just, she, she knew that she fucked up and she snapped right back into the zombies um, secretary, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the, the State Department mode, right? And that 100% it would be the Russians that would be behind it. There is no doubt in my mind, Senator, and it is <laughs> classic Russian uh, technique.
to blame on the other guy what they're planning to do themselves. Wow. Wow. You guys are funny, man. So she's talking about false flags, right? When you, you, you carry out a military operation or some kind of uh, attack and then you blame another, another party. You blame the enemy to make it look like they did it. I mean, this is... I, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. Do you know that in the 60s, in the 60s, they were already considering um, uh, a shooting down. So they, they wanted to paint uh, an airliner. Um, uh, you know, uh, the, the Americans wanted to paint an airliner and, and pretend that the Cubans shot it down and killed all these American civilians just so they could blame the Cubans. They didn't go through with it in the end, but they were planning this stuff back in the 60s. Just a few years ago in 2014 and, and, and other instances in Syria, they did false flag attacks where they did these, these so-called... Um, uh, you know, Bashar al-Assad, the Syrian government, apparently uh, used chemical weapons right when they're winning a battle, which, you know, every, ge every army in the world does that, right? As soon as you're about to win a battle, just go use some chemical weapons on 30 civilians. Wow, that has huge strategic value, right? Really galaxy-brained strategy here. And so every time the rebels are about to lose, all of a sudden Bashar al-Assad starts to use chemical weapons and then they can blame him and go bomb him like they did in, in April 2018, the US, UK, France. How convenient, right? And then they say it's classic Russian technique. No, actually it's extremely <laughs> classic American. Gulf of Tonkin is another one, right? The weapons of mass destruction, 2003, they, they're always, always creating false flags and, and, and uh, uh, manufacturing uh, the, uh, fabricating is, is rather the, the, the right word. Fabricating these, ex these extraordinary lies, right? To start wars, to blame the other guy. Wow. Talk about lack of self-awareness, right? But anyway, that's not the point here. That's not the point. The point is, look at her body language. I mean, her body language is something else. Her body language is something else. I, I, she couldn't even say Ukrainians, right? She was like the uh, Ukrainians, crayons. She's choosing her words so carefully, she forgot the nationality. <laughs> Christ. Oh, Christ. Oh, that was not good for her. Here, I'm going to play this other clip over here. Maybe you can, see, you can see her body language a bit more. We did coordinate with them beforehand. We met with the opposition before that meeting. Here we go. I only have... Uh, biological research facilities which, in fact, we are now quite concerned Russian troops, Russian forces may be seeking to uh, gain control of. So we are working with the Ukrainians on how they can prevent. L look at the pen. Do you see the pen in her hands? Look, look down here. Wow. Wow. With the Ukrainians on how <laughs> they can prevent any of those research materials from falling into the hands of uh, Russian forces should they approach. I I'm sure you're aware that the Russian propaganda t groups are already putting out there all kinds of information about how they've uncovered a plot by the Ukrainians to release biological weapons in the country and with NATO's coordination. If there's a biological or chemical weapon incident or, uh, or attack inside of Ukraine, is there any doubt in your mind that 100 percent it would be the Russians that would be behind it? There is no doubt in my mind, Senator, and it is there's no doubt in my mind, Senator. She's, not, she, she's like, thank you so much. There's no doubt in my mind, Senator. That's what I was trying to say all along. Look, man. Look, look, look. Um, this video is not I incriminating by itself. It's not, we don't need just this video. We went through, again, we, we didn't do Juliana's work justice to go through uh, uh, what she did in such short time. You really have to go read this thing. It's enormous. Uh, she's been talking about this years ago. Years ago. OK, and again, it's it's uh, um, she was on the ground. She didn't just publish a bunch of documents She's on the ground uh, interviewing the people uh, locally. Actually, I wanted to play you a clip where, where you can see her confronting the, the, the guards um, uh, just earlier. But you could, I didn't want to mute Deliana. She was actually speaking, but I played the clip um, over it. I mean, she was on the ground showing that there's something there's something very, very shady going on. And wants to know why security guards are filming her. I'm behind the fence and I want to know why are you filming us? We were over there on the street talking with the local people and you started filming us. And then of course she gets she gets thrown out of the EU. They kick her out because she's confronting US officials about the, the, the bio labs. There's too much here. There is too much. And you look at the history of the U.S. I mean, do I need to remind you guys 
Look, there was a meme in 2003 when, when the U.S. was about to invade Iraq. There was a meme on the internet. It was like, how do you know Saddam Hussein has uh, chemical weapons or, or uh, weapons of mass destruction? And, and the answer was, um, because we kept the receipts, right? Because the U.S., they gave Saddam uh, biological weapons. They, they let him have a biological weapons program. Um, you know, it did horrific things with it. Again, don't get confused. There, was, there were no WMDs in 2003. I'm talking about the decades before that. Okay, so the, the war in 2003 is unjustified. And even if, you know, you, you get it, I'm talking about way before that. So he gassed the Iranians, you know, during the, the war from 80 to 88. Uh, and that was, the, the, I mean, they weren't just given to him by the, the U.S. or the, the West in general. They were supplying him. Professor Marandi, who I was talking to yesterday, he survived two chemical attacks by Saddam. And, of course, uh, the Kurds. Right. So, so they, they don't mind their own allies using it because back then Saddam was a de facto um, a U.S. ally, a de facto U.S. ally. Again, I know a lot of people will be like, no, no. yeah, but he was doing their bidding, whether he, wittingly or unwittingly. In any case, um, so this idea that the U.S. has always been some kind of responsible actor and they've never used chemical weapons. Let me put this, let me put it to you this way. There's only one country in history that has used nuclear weapons on, not just in general, but specifically on civilians, and that's the United States. They use them on um, uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and you don't need to take my word for it. Um, I know a lot of people to this day, they're, they're brainwashed, and they think that so it's, that was some kind of necessary action to win the war. No, it wasn't. Just go read the diaries from the U.S. admirals in the fucking Pacific Fleet. So that's their theater of war. It's not just some random U.S. admiral. It's several of them from that, that Pacific theater, the specific one where they're fighting the Japanese, who were very clear that there was no need to use the, uh, the nuclear weapons, um, and the Japanese were on the verge of surrender. It's not my word. It's the U.S. admirals who were fighting that war in the Pacific. So go read it. Uh, you know, so again, um, I'm just, you know, <laughs> these statements from Jem Psaki um, over here on Twitter, and all the other things, like acting like they're, they're, they're responsible and they would never do that. I mean, this is just rubbish. This is just complete nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Uh, Absolute complete nonsense. I want to show you something over here. This is um, this is the the map. Uh, hold on a second. T take a look at what they're saying from the Russian Defense Ministry. I forgot to play one clip. Take a look at this, okay? Ведение специальной военной операции. Скрытые факты экстренной зачистки киевским режимом следов реализуемой на Украине военно-биологической программы, финансируемой Минобороны США. Right, so you see my point here, he's referring to an urgent destruction, so they're, they're trying to cover up their traces and so on. Again, I don't know, I don't know if that's been verified, I, I don't think it changes anything about what we're saying. Um, I just want to make one thing very clear, because I was talking to, to Claudia about this, you know, who, again, who helps us on the channel here. She, she's a biology major, has a master's, and I, I showed her some of these documents that have been published, right, to, to get her opinion. And I want to be clear on something, not, not Diliana, but the latest ones that the Russians have been publishing that they say that they found, right? Um, do, you need to understand something, because when, when they say that these are bio-research facilities, the, the, the thing is, uh, they're dual purpose. So they, they could be used uh, for uh, research. Let's say it's vaccine development, just as an example, right? Even anthrax, right? But at the same time, they could also easily be weaponized. Uh, Glenn Greenwald was writing earlier about this, uh, the anthrax letters. I don't know how old you guys are, but I remember in 2001, 2002, something like that, they, there were these anthrax letters that were being sent to Congress, and they tried to blame it on Saddam Hussein, and it turns out that it was a specific strain that was developed in the United States. So it was, again, a false flag, right? They tried to pin it on Saddam. It wasn't Saddam. It was made in the U.S. It was a specific strain developed in the U.S. And you know how that strain was created? Supposedly for, for vaccine development, right? So, again, um, th just because something is, is, again, it could be very honestly made just for uh, perfectly legitimate scientific and health reasons doesn't mean that it can't be weaponized accidentally or, or purposely. Do you understand? Um, one, another thing you need to consider, where are these places located? Why don't they do this in the U.S.? Like, wh why are these facilities on Russia's border and China's border, Iran's border? Do you have one fucking iota of, of sense, of common sense about geopolitics? Like, use your fucking brain. Stop being a moron. Use your brain. What, there's a reason they put them there. Don't be stupid. And I want to tell you another thing also. Um, again, I, actually, Claudia sent me a bunch of notes, and we were talking about this all day. 
But uh, the, the other violations, because um, these are violations of the uh, Article 8 of the Rome Statute, so the International Criminal Court, and also the UN ban on, on uh, biological weapons. The, here's one clear violation, right? Because the U.S. didn't provide any information about this research to the U.N., which they, 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 must have, they, they were obligated to do that. Right. And that's a, a violation of the point specifically of the production of biological weapons. And this is uh, relating specifically to the CIA Battelle Project Clear Vision. OK, so uh, I'll, I'll read you just a quote here. Reconstructed and tested a Soviet era anthrax bomblet in order to test its dissemination character characteristics. Operation was omitted from the U.S. Biological Weapons Convention declaration submitted to the U.N. So every country that's a party to the Biological Weapons Convention, they have to tell the UN what they're doing. They have to be very transparent about this. And, uh, well, they didn't do that, right? So, uh, again, this is something that Diliana wrote about, right? Um, I mean, there's really literally so many things to go through. I, I, I don't know if I can show you the, the notes here because they're in Word, Microsoft Word, and I'm not showing you Word right now, but just the biting flies. This is another thing that, that, that um, yeah, biting insects. I think you saw it there one moment. Yeah, so this is, this is very con uh, concerning. And again, this is not just Ukraine. This is in Georgia, for example, right? They, they, it's all part of the same program. Um, the, the issue is that they're not just uh, exploring the pathogen. It's the vectors. And a vector means how you deliver something like a payload. So whether that's contaminated water or insects, you know, you, you're basically transmitting whatever it is, right? Um, anthrax, whatever else it is. And so that's the thing that, that that's also another telltale sign that something very dangerous is going on is they're examining, uh, uh, you know, uh, biting insects uh, for, for one. Uh, let me show you over here, right? Again, this is Diliana's work and it's so detailed and I really highly recommend you guys read it. I'm going to drop a link right now in the chat. But it's, it's, it's so, um, again, it's a real telltale sign. And Claudia, you know, as a biologist, um, she was saying uh, to me that it's suspicious because up until uh, they started this research in Tbilisi, which is the capital in Georgia, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, there, there were no outbreaks of these biting flies right uh, you know, before until they started doing this research there. Do you see, like, again, it, it's, it's uh, so many things. And this is way before Ukraine, the way before the war in Ukraine. This is already happening again in Georgia, but it's all part of the same program. And the fact that they're trying to conceal this so hard, the fact that they react like this, uh, shutting down reporters, um, you know, uh, saying that, oh, it's just Russian disinformation. How many things did they say were Russian disinformation? How many things? You know, they, they, they said, for example, that, um, uh, uh, God, I really don't want to go into all of this, but the whole Russiagate stuff with uh, me election interference, you know, that turned out to be BS. And then they started saying that uh, Julian Assange is working with the Russians, total BS. And then they were saying that um, there are Russian bounties on, on U.S. troops in Afghanistan. Yeah. Again, total BS. And if you come out and you, you question this, they say you're a Kremlin uh, asset or you're a Putin puppet. Shut the fuck up for two seconds and address the argument. I don't, I don't care what you want to describe it as. Answer the question. Just, you know, address the argument. Don't, don't, don't do this name-calling 12-year-old bullshit, okay? So they can't do that. They can't do that. And here, the fact that he's asking her, uh, Rubio is asking Newland to preemptively blame the Russians. What is she? Is she sitting on a fucking crystal ball that we don't know about? How could you on earth could you say that it's 100% the Russians when it doesn't even have fucking happen? What, what is she, a magician? She's a fucking wizard? What, what, she's a witch? She can see into the future? You just, you, you're having a, co a congressional hearing and you're asking her to predict the future and blame it on the Russians? How do you know it's the Russians and it's not aliens or it's not the fucking British? Where, where do you get this from? Like, this is so childish. It's so childish. It's outrageous. If someone did that in the, uh, on the Russian side, they, they, you know, again, they would say, oh, look, they're typically blaming the Americans and so on. Jesus, it's like 1950s, man. It's the Red Scare, you know? I'm really impressed by, by uh, um, Undersecretary Newland. You know, she, she has these, uh, 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 she's an incredible capability, uh, incredible foresight. I commend her. <laughs> I commend her. Wow. Wow. So again, um, here's another a aspect. Sorry, I don't know what you, you can't see my notes, but I'm reading to you from my notes here. Uh, and specifically, I'm addressing Diliana's work. Ukraine has no control. Ukraine has no control over the military bio laboratories on its own territory. Diliana pointed that out just a few minutes ago. 
According to the 2005 agreement between the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ministry of Health of Ukraine, the Ukrainian government is prohibited from public disclosure of sensitive information about the U.S. program, and Ukraine is obliged to transfer to the U.S. Department of Defense dangerous pathogens for biological research. Um, here, actually, it's right there in the article. You can see it now. See, that this is exactly what I was reading to you now. Okay, and so... Claudius comments on this. If, if Ukraine, as a sovereign nation, agreed to that with the U.S., it's not illegal, but it's highly suspicious. Right? It, that's certainly suspicious. Um, again, let me go up, up over here. This is the issue, because when you say that, okay, these are just innocent uh, uh, scientific uh, in installations, uh, fine. But the, the problem is they can easily turn sour, to put it mildly. Okay? And the point that I want to drive home here, let, let's say everything is really fine. Like, there's, there's literally nothing... Uh, uh, um, there's no conspiracy here. Everything is totally fine with these facilities. Okay, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Fine. But just remember one thing. When they attacked Iraq in 2003, when they invaded Iraq in 2003 over weapons of mass destruction, and Colin Powell was sitting there holding up this fucking tube of powder or cocaine or salt, or I don't know, what, or washing powder. I don't know what the hell was in that tube at the U United Nations when he was holding that up. Uh, we were supposed to take his word. This stupid photograph over here, we're, we're supposed to take his word just because he brings a tube filled of who, who knows what to the UN. And that, that's enough. And he shows these, these wacky satellite images that are, are so grainy you can't even make anything out of them. And they, they've drawn up these, um, these toy trucks, li literally toy trucks. Take a look at this. Look, look at this. I'm not even kidding. This is what Colin Powell brought to the United Nations. I'm not even joking. This is a truck, a photo, uh, uh, it's not even a photo, it's a graphic. Someone drew a truck, and they said that this is a mobile production facility for biological agents. A fucking drawing. And this is not one, the whole presentation was that. This was the president, he brought this to the United Nations, and he's like, this is proof that Iraq has WMDs. And they fucking invaded that country and destroyed it over a fucking drawing, over a fucking cartoon, and a fucking tube. And you're, you're telling me right now that we're supposed to take their word about biological weapons? Are you high? Are you absolutely batshit? They have a track record of lying about biological weapons. Why on earth would you take their word for it? This was the whole presentation. I'm not even kidding. They have multiple slides. Look, it was so detailed. They said, you know, it, com it comes on, on trains as well. It goes on train tracks. Look, there's a water tank. There's an active material tank. There's fermentation, you know? And then there was the lie, he can do it in 45 minutes. It's, it's like Breaking Bad, you know, Saddam Hussein, he puts on a mask and he jumps in this truck and he can cook up a batch of anthrax in 45 minutes and launch it in, on the UK. This is the kind of shit they were saying. This absolute madness with drawings, with cartoons. And they, they killed a million people over these cartoons. And you, you expect us to take their word now over, uh, about, what, about their monkey business, about what they're doing in Ukraine? Get the fuck out of here. Unbelievable. These are the last people on earth whose word you should take about anything related to WMDs. Whether they're blaming others or, or it's their own stockpile and their own activities. Unbelievable. They, they cooked up some, some drawings and killed people over them. Get, get the hell out of here. There's way more. There's way more evidence. Clear cut. Cold evidence. About bio, biological activities. Funded by the Pentagon. Not some other department, the Pentagon, in Ukraine, than there ever was evidence about Iraq having WMDs in 2003. So you're going to go start a war over that and then act like, oh, we're not doing anything shady. You're doing way, way shadier stuff than what you accuse the Iraqis of. And again, let me be very clear. That doesn't mean it's okay for Russia to, to invade Ukraine. Okay, let's be very clear. Even, even if the U.S. is making weapons there, it, it's not a reason, it's not an excuse for the Russians to invade. There are other ways to do this. You know, it just for example, let me give you an example. If, if the Americans say there are ke chemical weapons in Syria, is it okay for them to invade Syria? Of course not. So the same applies to Ukraine. It's not okay for the Russians to do that. But if we're talking about evidence, there's a way more here to incriminate the Americans. Uh, and, and honestly, they need to answer some questions because the only answer we've heard so far is, no, no, no. This is a Russian conspiracy theory. And now Victoria Newland admits that it's not a conspiracy theory, that these facilities actually exist. So what else have they been lying about? 
What else have they been lying about? That's what I want to know. And given the stuff that Diliana published, I mean, Jesus Christ, you saw how uncomfortable they were. They did not want to answer those questions, right, in 2018. They did not want to answer those questions. They literally kicked her out of the European Union for confronting the, the uh, uh, U.S. Secretary of the Department of Health for asking him about these facilities. They kicked her out. I showed you the video just earlier. So they're trying to hide something here. They're very, very obviously trying to hide something. If it's so innocent, why, don't, why not disclose it? What's wrong with, with you know, scientific research, with medical research? Great. Great. If it's for the benefit of humanity, why would you not want to show people that and, and, and celebrate your own successes and celebrate your own research if there's nothing wrong with it? Okay? And then uh, if, if you have nothing to hide, why are you calling it Russian disinformation? Why, why are you, you dismissing it as a crackpot conspiracy theory and then turns out to be true? That, that means you're not telling the truth about other things. I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, I just want to say one last thing. I was, <laughs> I, someone sent me a link to Tucker Carlson's segment on this. And he, again, he makes some valid points. But you know what I hate about Fox News is that <laughs> even when they're saying the truth, right, even when they're saying something good w once in a while, especially, especially when it's like the anti-war stuff, or in this case, they were, they were questioning the veracity of the, 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 the statements coming out of the U.S. officials. You know, they're like, well, fuck China, and the U.S. is the best country in the world, so fuck those Chinese people. But you know, our government was lying, and I think we should really have some reservations about what they're saying. Like, why do you have to preclude it with the racist bullshit? Just, just, say the, just say the main point. You don't have to say fuck China and, all the, and fuck the Russians, and we don't trust the Russians. Why? <laughs> they, they, they can't do it normally, right? They have to have this whole, like, uh, USA is the best, and everyone else is, 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 is insane, and they're liars, and they're disgusting. But, you know, at the same time, I don't think our officials are telling the truth. Jesus Christ. Come on, man. Do better. Do better than that. Ah. Uh.